Monday night was the eve of the big general election, and in Hilo, politicos spent the afternoon and evening as they normally do the day before the vote. Sign waving on Kamehameha Avenue, followed by the traditional Democratic Grand Rally at the Mo'oheo Bandstand by the Bayfront. Once there, candidates expressed their final plea for public support and urged everyone to get out to vote, especially to help decide the hotly contested U.S. Senate race between Republican Linda Lingle and Democrat Maisie Hirono. This is why every vote counts. And because every vote counts, tomorrow we are going to be canvassing, we're going to be phone banking, we need you to do that this last drop of commitment must come from all of you. Others running for office took the stage, even candidates in the nonpartisan races, such as the Hawaii County Council and the Hawaii County Mayor. The rain kept the crowd down a bit, but what set this year's rally apart was the presence of demonstrators. It was during U.S. congressional candidate Tulsi Gabbard's speech that things got interesting. It's that makes this democratic process work. First, a free Hawaii group marched to the edge of the bandstand, holding signs and shouting remarks about the illegal occupation of Hawaii by the United States. Also, the gang from the Occupy Hilo movement, many in their Guy Fox masks, demanded to abolish the PLDC, a protest against the controversial Public Land Development Corporation that Governor Neil Abercrombie and State Senator Malama Solomon advocated for last legislative session. The governor was in attendance at the rally and he appeared a bit irked by the opposition. But the most tense moment of the night came a few minutes after these statements from Abercrombie. We don't apologize to anybody who criticizes and doesn't participate. They have their opportunity. These people put themselves forward. When activist Gene Tomashiro took the governor up on his challenge to participate. Here is the video from that moment. That they have, that join the Democratic Party, my friend, and you get up here and win fair and square, and you get the faith and trust of people. Don't talk about it. Do it. Join up. If you show respect, show respect. Show respect. Get your own form. This is the Democratic Party. Join up. Show respect, bro. Anybody In Hawaii. Is there a legal treatment? That's alright. That's alright. Is there a legal? What do you teach your children? That's alright. What do you teach your children? Is there a legal treatment of People died for your freedom, my friend. Who gonna stand up for Show the respect. Hey, what are you teaching your children? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There is a time. There is a time and a place for debate. If the gentleman wants to say that he represents the people's voice. He has the opportunity to put himself forward as a candidate, to ask the permission of the people, to ask the permission of the people to be able to represent their interests. This is representative government, not tin horn dictatorship. Eventually, things simmered down, but the confrontation had been in the making since the Free Hawaii group gathered at the Kamehameha statue in Hilo to do some sign-waving of their own earlier in the day. The gathering was also significant because of a meeting amongst the island's native Hawaiians, many angered about the recent eviction of Abel Simeona Louie from Kawa. 
Louis was in Hilo for the gathering where he presented his case to the respected kupuna, known supporters of Hawaiian sovereignty, in the hopes of figuring out what to do next. I mean, they don't know what to do because they can't even go fishing too because everything is not right. And how well, can I go if it's not right? The children are not happy. The lands are everything all. They, they lied to the people here, but Wild Diesel said they were going to make 400 jobs. At the table, Albert Kahivahiva Okalani Ha'a Jr., who told everyone that it is his mana'o that the land does not belong to anyone but God. Everything on this aina is related in Kanaka back to God. And then we sit down and, oh, my tutu, this one. Nobody care nothing about that. We all our tutu came from the top. Let's skip that kind of thinking, you know what I mean? And we just got to focus, pure, huh? Yeah. Who that land belong to? Yeah. What kingdom you fighting for? Kingdom of Makwa, you know what I mean? Yeah. The way we, we got to go together, cause that's, that's my mana, okay? That's the only reason why I come out. Mahalo, cause that was, that was very good. And Sam Kaliliiki Jr., who urged everyone to be realistic about Abel's situation and to coordinate a sound plan of action. Yeah, so we need to come together and value our aloha, value our bar on the right, bar on the left, bar in the front, bar in the back. You got to work in harmony. In order for us to be effective in Kawa, we got to all show up at the same time. That's why you say, okay, we're going to be down there, say, noon, Thursday. All of us make plans to go there. Is the Konohiki there? But I hope is the, the Konohiki, you be up front. You know, and we, we go in just peacefully. They're not going to stop us. And the pala pala. We have rights. Since evicting Louis and his supporters from Kawa, the government officials have been conducting an archaeological survey of the popular beach. The county purchased the land using a special open space fund last year and plans to make it into an accessible park for the public to enjoy. In the meantime, Abel is doing okay, but he says he wants to return to Kawa, where he was considered by some to be the acting Konohiki of the land.